Hello everyone, I'm Lori Hanna. Many of you know me, but for those of you who don't, my husband Dave and I live in Salem and we have attended Hamilton Congregational for over 28 years and have raised our three children, Zach and Abby and Caleb here. I am an ESL teacher working in Lynn at the elementary level. And this is my favorite time of the year when I can be outdoors, walking, working in my garden, or being on our boat or kayaking on the water. It's such a joy to be outdoors. So Margot asked me to speak on Philippians 4, 2 through 22. And um, this is one of my favorite passages of the Bible. And the title given to this section is called Total Joy. What more can we want in this life than total joy? All through the study, we have read about the theme of joy. Pastor Jeremy shared two weeks ago that Christian joy is the deep satisfaction of knowing who God is and what he has done for us. He reminded us that we need to connect our desire for joy to the source of joy, which is Jesus. I believe that a reason for a lack of joy is that we have our hearts and minds focused more on the expectations and blessings of this life rather than on the blesser. And in my experience, and I'm sure many of yours, it has often taken losing some of the pleasures in life before we come to see who our true source of joy is. There's so much to cover in these verses, so I've chosen to focus on Philippians 4, 4 through 13. And I'll read these uh, verses. Verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Don't you love those verses? I have gone back to those time and time again throughout my life. And there's six points I thought would be good to touch on in um, these verses. Um, the first one being rejoice always. We have all experienced anxiety through our lives, but especially this past year with COVID, which has brought so much uncertainty and trial for many people. And anxiety has been an age old problem that is common to man throughout um, the ages. Paul is writing to the Philippians who had some issues that caused them to worry. Even though they were a very strong and giving church, there was some internal division as well as external concerns that brought anxiety. How ironic that Paul, who was experiencing persecution behind bars, could be the one to encourage the Philippians to rejoice always. Paul has suffered greatly for serving Christ, yet his attitude shows that one's inner attitude does not have to reflect our outward experiences or circumstances. Paul was full of joy and could rejoice continually because he knew and had experienced that no matter what happened to him, Jesus was with him and would provide just what he needed for each day. Number two, he calls the Philippians to be gentle. I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling anxious and stressed, I can become very irritable and short-tempered. But we can be gentle even when life is difficult because when we let the Lord fight our battles, a person is free to let go of his anxieties and walk in peace and in gentleness. Third, Paul reminds them and us that the Lord is near. Um, you could take that 
section, that verse in two ways. One, that we need to be ready at any time for the Lord's return. And second, we can be full of joy because Christ dwells in us. He is near to us and he pours his love into us, which then allows us not to be anxious. Do you think a little child who feels loved deeply by their father feels anxious for long? No, because he trusts his father. He knows he loves him and is with him and he is in control. He tells him how he feels and he can rest in his presence. Four, be anxious for nothing. This is actually a command, not a suggestion. How can it be that it is a command? How it's just natural to be anxious. We have so many issues that cause us to fear and to worry. But Paul is exhorting believers to remember that as a child of God, we can transfer the anxieties and burdens we face on a daily basis to our Father who will take care of us. Paul had confidence that God was in control, and he wants all believers to have this same confidence. Five, bring all your requests to the Lord with thanksgiving. Paul does not promise that God will give them exactly what they requested, but he does promise that when the Philippians pray about things with thanksgiving, God will change the Philippians themselves. He says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And six, choose to think on the things that are good and lovely. Don't focus on the problems, but ask God to catch you in your negative thoughts and worries and bring you back to thinking about the things that are of him. Things that are excellent, pure, lovely, and beautiful. Although this is written to the Philippian church, the principles of these passages applies to all believers. When we have problems and worries, we often forget to pray about them. We can find ourselves trying to come up with a solution, reading books and talking to others and laying awake at night. Then when we do pray, we may think that the only help that God can give us is to grant us the request that we have presented and to change the situation. Sometimes God will do that. He has the power to change any situation, but he will not be limited to that. God does not promise to change every situation to our liking, but he does promise to give us his peace that passes all understanding during every situation. I want to focus a bit more on how we can get peace when we have so much anxiety and when we haven't had our prayers answers and we've had experienced great loss and suffering, which many people in our church have been going through and have had to go through. Where do you find this peace? It has to start from an understanding and a belief that God's ways are higher than ours. He sees the beginning from the end. He is a loving father who wants our good. So Paul tells us that when we present every concern and request with prayer and petition, it has to be done with thanksgiving. The key is to give thanks while we are asking. You may wonder, how can I be thankful if I don't know if he will answer my prayer the way I need him to, the way I want him to? This is done by believing and trusting that whatever God allows, even if it isn't what we wanted, it is for our good, for he knows us best. When we know how much he loves us and we trust him, we can bring our request with a thankful heart ahead of time, but because we know that he will take care of us and our needs perfectly. This allows us to live in peace and not worry. Many times my kids have asked me to pray for something very specific. I've told them that I will pray for God's best because I don't know what will be the best in the long run. They didn't like that answer. And when I think back on my past, I didn't like that either. I wanted my prayers and my dreams to be answered the way I wanted them to turn out. I'd like to share briefly two times in my life where I have seen what God has been teaching me um, with these lessons. 
than these verses. Many of you know these stories, um, but I do hope that as I share them, they will encourage you and um, just remind you how God works in difficult times. The first one was when I was in Guatemala with our mission team. And while driving in the night to get to the airport after a week of serving the Guatemalan people through building houses and hosting a VBS for the local children, our van had been hijacked and driven to a dark sugar field. Here we were taken out of the van one by one, robbed, some assaulted, and we were roughly tied up to await our fate. As I sat on the ground, tied up with my head down, I imagined the possible outcomes, kidnapping, maybe being sex trafficked or even killed. I was shaking with fear as most of my team members were. But after a while, when our attackers were away from us, I had a chance to stretch my neck and I looked up into the night sky. It was a clear sky that was full of stars. I heard the Lord's voice say to me, to my frightened spirit, don't be afraid. I am the one who made all these stars and planets, and I am greater than any of these men that are attacking you, and I am with you, and I will keep my angels over you to protect you. Immediately, I thanked God for those words, and my fear was gone. I was filled with an indescribable peace. Later, as I thought about that time, I realized that as long as my head was down and I was focused on my problems, on what could happen, fear and anxiety overtook me as well as the people around me. But when I had my eyes focused on God, I was able to praise him for his power and I had his peace. And this peace, peace is catching as I shared it with our team members. And in that uh, instance, we all began to quietly sing one of my favorite songs when I'm afraid is Victory in Jesus. This is a lesson that has never left me. Fast forward a year later, when I was praying continually for our daughter, Abby, who at the time was experiencing many months and actually years of very deep depression and emotional turbulence, as well as two suicide attempts. Everything we tried to do to help her had seemed to fail. For three days, I fasted and prayed that God would help us get the help that she would need and that he would heal her and bring our daughter back to us in her right mind. I prayed as I read the passage from Ephesians 3.20 that he would do above and beyond what I could imagine. During these days of fasting, I was also doing a lot of praising and worshiping God for who he is and what he has done for me and those around me. I had read from Bill Bright, who's the founder of Campus Crusade, who's done a lot of fasting, that he would spend the first hours or days of his fast in praise and worship before he ever asked God for anything. And it allowed him to focus more on God than on what he wanted. The day after I prayed that prayer, something terrible happened, which was beyond what I could ever imagine. As a result of a mental break, our daughter committed a terrible crime that led to her arrest and a sentence to five years in prison. As you can imagine, our minds were spinning in confusion and anxiety. Our hearts were broken for Abby, as well as for the victim and her, their family. How could this tragic thing happen? Why did God allow this? Why didn't he answer my prayers? What was going to happen to our daughter? What would people think of us? And how could I ever go back to teaching? Friends, in all of this tragedy, all I can say is that God did give me peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Through many prayers of his people, his grace upheld us one day at a time. I also believe because of a foundation of thanksgiving that I was learning before this crime happened, God helped me to see that he still is at work and can redeem these very difficult situations. I do believe that the key to our peace and our trials is the ability through God's grace to give thanks 
and to rejoice in the Lord. To declare our trust in his goodness is to praise God. There were still times of worry, fear, and deep sadness. And in those times, I would cry out to God for Abby for the terrible things she was facing in the psychiatric hospital and later in prison. And several times I heard God remind me in his still small voice, what did I teach you in Guatemala? And I was reminded again to take my eyes off the problem and to set them on Jesus, to praise him and declare my trust in him even when my emotions didn't feel it. As the years have gone by, Prayer after prayer has been answered for Abby's protection and her well-being. I can even see how he answered my original prayer five years before. After several months of being in prison, Abby said that she believed she would have been dead if it wasn't for being stopped in her tracks and put in jail. A very hard way to get the help you need. Dave and I look back and we see how God brought so much help for Abby that we were un unable to provide. We still don't understand why God allowed it to happen. We still have concerns about Abby's future, but what hope and peace we can know as we present our worries and our requests with thanksgiving, knowing from experience that he will give us what we need for the day. I look at many women of faith in our church who have also I look at many women of faith in our church who have also had to walk in the valley of darkness. Several had suffered deep grief in the loss of their husbands, the death or serious illness of their children, and some have had to battle cancer themselves. But in their grief and their struggles, I see them choosing to keep rejoicing in Jesus and choosing to focus one day at a time and to trust in God, their good father. When we keep coming to our Father with our burdens and give him thanksgiving and choose to think on the good things of God, we will know the peace that passes all understanding. And that, my friends, is total joy. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we come to you today and we are so grateful that you are our Father, a Father who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Lord, you want us to bring our burdens to you. You want us to not walk with fear or anxiety. You want to remind us that you are near and to be gentle to those around us. You want us to keep our um, thoughts focused on the good things that you've given to us. Lord, help us to do those things. Give us your grace and help us to walk in your total joy. And we pray this in your name. Amen.